Alright, so I am going to be doing a tutorial on depth of field in Cinema 4D and how to get it to look nice. Um, most people know the stock depth of field in Cinema 4D is kind of shit, so I'm going to show you a better way um, without, and that's not in Cinema 4D to do it. So first, we'll do something very basic, um, I guess maybe an animation. Just get pyramids, put them in a cloner. Um, okay, put in a grid array. Just need one there. Make it like four, four. And do um, spread them out. We don't want them exactly, so let's do like 610. That's good. There we go. Um, right, let me just save it in the tut folder. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm quickly going to add a um uh, what do you call it? A random effector. You don't need to do this, I'm just doing this because I want to. But um no real reason. Okay. And now we can just put a um a disk around it. First, let's uh, drop to floor. That's just a plugin. I'll put that in the description. Um, it's just a really good plugin for you. Make that so it goes around it, kind of big. This isn't needed, but I just like doing this. Okay. So now it has here. I'll make a quick um. Uh, what do you call it? Animation. Okay. Just um, this is my setup. I mean, um, what do you call it that I made? Uh, you know, camera rig. There we go. So now, if you play it. Um, here let me go to the keyframes, pick both, clamp, oh, and do what it usually does, oh wait, clamp, okay, usually that works, I have no idea why it's not, but fuck it, um, that was dumb on me, but let me fix. Okay, there we go. I just did it a different way. Um, usually it works this way, but I don't know why it didn't. You can just go into timeline, right here, timeline. Click on that, highlight both, and then just make it linear. Um, so now if you play it, just kind of an infinite loop of that. Um, if you want, you can. I won't do that. Okay, so let's put that up a little bit more. Actually, maybe down. There we go. I uh, get good depth of field. We will now go into here and to the camera details. Add. I'm uh, starting at maybe. Um, I'll just do 240, and then another 240. That should be good. Um, and that's fine. And that's fine. Let me do a quick test render. Depth of field. Use gradients. Render. That seems good. Then you can do another way of testing it is going into multi pass in your render settings. If you don't know how to get there, it's right there. 
click it multipass depth multipass on just current frame change the resolution render it oops render it then go to layers multipass single uh, there you go I'm gonna change around the back a bit because you basically want the front to be kind of grayish for the depth or white up to you uh, the more white black means it's not blurry white means it's blurry kinda like that so I'll just go into um, the depth a bit I mean the camera a bit and maybe start it at um, 120 do another render there we go, that's better. Go to a different spot. Yeah. Like that. That's what I want. So now I will go into my render settings. Go to all frames. Save it as... I'll do PNG sequence with alpha. Then go to your multipass. Save it as a QuickTime or an AVI. Both up to you. I'll just do AVI this time go down full frames uncompressed um save a compositing file if you want I like doing this um oops I don't know why I said that okay oh I never saved these I'm dumb alright so make a new folder called render DOF Save this as DOF multi pass. Okay, um, so now I'll just add some lighting really quick. I'll just use um, a gradient. Is it a linear skylight? That is just fine for now. Doesn't matter to me. Um, um, yeah, so let me just render this. I'll put that, maybe um, some depth of field. I mean, um, sorry, global illumination. And by the way, this is animation will have the um, flickering shadows that I'm going to make because I don't feel like rendering along. But if you don't want to get flickering shadows in your GI renders, you go IR for render. It bumps up the render a lot, you can see. Because um, what it's going to do is actually kind of process each frame many times, about 13 passes, and it can take a while. Okay, so. Um, it's rendered. Now all I'm going to do is import the file. Let me just go to the spot of where I saved it. Um, because I forgot to save a compositing file, and I don't feel like going back and going back and doing it. So, um. Second, but this will help anyone else who doesn't want to do it that way either. So go find it, go to render, click the very first frame, and click open. And we'll open it all in here. And then you can just drag in the multipass. Put that there and just shut that off. Now I'm gonna make a ramp. All I did for that is control Y and you can make a um, solid. Name it ramp or whatever you want. Go add a ramp. Okay. I'll make a, a radial make it 360 to be in the middle or 540 if you're in HD. Um, just do this really quick, make a quick gradient. Okay. And I like adding a little scatter of maybe 150. Just smooths it out a little bit, and I like the little grainy look of it. 
So put that at the bottom. Name this. Um, doesn't matter for you. Okay. Now I'll show the multiple ways of doing this. There's this um, plugin, which I don't even want to say the name of it, but um, um, let me find the site really quick of what it's called. One sec. Okay, here it is. Um, you can just see that what it is called. Um, you can go here. I think there might be a um. Or what do you call it of it? It's called Lens Care, so you can get that and follow along with me, or do the in After Effects way, which I don't like as much. Um, so you can add an adjustment layer, um, and I'll do it the lens blur way first. So search lens blur, drag it in. First, it's going to be like this repeat edge pixels you want to click that then you're gonna pick your depth map and um basically that should be it almost you could say because you can see the blur in the back still I like the other version much more um I think it just makes a better look so you can make the depth of field much more than you can see. So uh, let's delete that and do the one that I like. So this is just more realistic, I think, looking. So you can add maybe six radius depth layer. Pick that, and this plugin likes to screw up with it. Um, and just sort do invert basically on the depth. Uh, you can put this up if you want the curve, if you want it to be like a harder um, depth map. And to do that, to see it, you can go to Show Depth Buffer. And here you go, you can see it, and you can increase it if you want, if you want it to be a harder um, blur, which is kind of a nice look, but. Um, I think I'll just keep it at um, 1 and maybe put the uh, that up a bit maybe to 17 okay that's good you can see right there you can see the front is the blurred and the back is blurred and you can it's focused in the middle um, again you can see in the depth buffer that how the white is completely blurred, the gray is kind of blurred, and black is non-blurred. And same with this, it's just the opposite. Black is blurred. I mean, yeah, black is blurred, and um, white is not blurred. So, okay, go back and show that, and then, oops, normal, and invert. Okay, um, this doesn't really matter. Don't mess with this unless you're using some other type of depth map, but just do luminance. Um, highlight is a nice effect. It gives just a little highlight. It's better, I think, in, when I use it in intros. It gives a better look. But um, There. I'll just add some curves. Let me shut off the depth really quick. Curves. A quick color correction. Um, just kind of to boost the the um, blur. So I really like this effect. I use it in a lot of stuff, and I never use the um, in Cinema 4D type. So yeah. Um, so that is. Here, I'll render this out and put it at the end. See ya.